Hey guys, good morning. I am in the middle of a ton of glazing, but I promised you a video, so I am going to deliver. Um, my apologies to the Laguna Clay Company. They did not ask for this, but here it is anyway. <laughs> I was told um, that Laguna Frost 6 is very difficult to hand build with. So um, naturally, I had to give it a try because, you know, it's, it's a challenge and I just can't pass it up. So um, overall, I would say that while there are a few things that you need to know about this clay before you start hand building with it, I think that it's completely doable. I was able to make um, 36 mugs right now. This is fisked. Um, 36 mugs, um, no cracking. No cracking during drying, no cracking during bisque, and God willing, no cracking during the glaze fire that's going to be hopefully Friday of this week, we'll see. But um, here are a few things about this clay. First and foremost, I am going to tag a whole bunch of stores in this video. You guys, you're listing this clay as a cone 5 clay body. You're giving the vitrification absorption values for cone 5. I have double checked it with the Laguna Clay Company. That is a typo. This is a cone six clay body. So those numbers that you're citing for the absorption, those are for cone six, not cone five. Um, so you have to be really careful and you should probably go back and change that. Um, and, you know, feel free to call Laguna Clay Company, but, um, and I can forward you their email that they have written to me. Um, those numbers are for cone six, so you guys, this is a cone six clay body. If you fire it to cone five, you're going to under fire your clay. Now this is a porcelain. So firing it to cone five is probably not gonna make that much of a difference. But um, for those of us who are into details, it's a cone six clay body. So Laguna Frost six. Laguna Frost six, oh my goodness, looks like this. 25 pounds of it. It's a very white porcelain. Um, it's also a very hard porcelain. It's more of a true porcelain than uh, most mid-range porcelains. And I think that's why it has um, like a bad name for hand building. But um, obviously, as we all know, people make beautiful sculptures out of porcelain. So everything is possible and you can totally hand build with this clay. So let me give you a few tips that I found really helpful that um, I think will get you on your way. First and foremost, so this is a very hard and flaky clay body, okay? It's a typical porcelain. So um, what I found is that unlike my other clay bodies that I've used in the past, I cannot take Laguna Frost 6 out of the bag, slice off a piece, and roll out a slab. That just doesn't work very well. I will get cracks in half of the, the things that I make with it. Um, what does work is taking your brick of clay and slicing it into individual pieces. So I do, this is one mug right here. And I wrap it in a wet paper towel and I put it in a Ziploc bag and I stick it on the shelf for a few days. And that will get you a very pliable, very soft slab. I don't know if you can tell, but it actually moves very easily. And this is what you're going to need. It's a bit of a pain to work with. It will stick to your fingers, but if you don't do this, I, I really think that this is why um, people complain that this clay cracks, because um, if it's not soft enough, it will. Um, similarly, when you roll it out, right? So I have a slab roller. I, I roll on a slab roller. And um, usually I would go down like a quarter of an inch at a time, you know, no problem. With this clay, I mean, one eighth, maybe. Like you just go down little by little and as you roll you know, little by little. I mean, really take your time. It's gonna feel like forever, but those extra three minutes that you took rolling it out slowly will pay off later um, because it won't. So what happens is if you roll it really fast and especially if you haven't like pre-moistened it, um, the layers almost like separate. And as you roll it out, you're gonna get a vertical crack. So um, I, I think that what happens is that people get those, but they're not visible right away. And then when they go to dry this clay, all of a sudden the crack appears. But it actually, I think, has more to do with the way you pre-treated the clay and the way you rolled it out than um, with the way you dried it. Although that's also always important, of course. Um, so those are my two points to start working with it. You have to pre-moisten it 
and I don't mean spray it with a with a spray bottle you know you really you have to wrap it and set it aside and let it get all nice and even and moist and then you have to um, roll it out very slowly take your time with it don't rush this clay when you rib it rib gently because it will be wet and sticky and it's gonna stick to your rib um, you know you may even consider maybe sponging it instead um, the other thing with this clay that um, I had to get used to is that it dries very, very fast. Now, I'm used to working with porcelains, but this clay in particular, it dries like instantaneously. So what that means to a sculptor is that I actually had to keep a um, roll of wet paper towels and um, I had to keep cleaning my hands because I would get dry clay, like, you know, slip on my hands. And then uh, when I would go to sculpt, it would mess up what I'm doing. So um, wet paper towels, wet paper towels to keep the rest of your piece moist. If you're working only on one section of it, if you're carving, you know, whatever, keep the rest wrapped because your handle is gonna dry like this and then it's gonna possibly crack or, you know, um, maybe sometimes uh, pull on your mug and actually crack the mug. So um, wet paper towels, keep it moist. Keep in mind, it dries very, very, very quickly. More much more fast, uh, quick, <laughs> can you tell I haven't had coffee yet? It dries much faster than um, some of the other clays that I have tried. Um, slip is really difficult with this clay. This is the one thing I have not really been able to master yet. Um, I can't use slip to attach something or to um, you know, make a pattern. It just seems to crack. Um, my hunch is that if you add something like um, like Cairo syrup or um, it really has to be something viscous like I almost want to say like maple syrup um, if you mix that with your slip maybe that would not crack as much but um, I haven't tried it so that's that is not a tip um, that's just my speculation um, but in general what I have found that does work is instead of slip I used um, just really really mushy clay and then I would just put it where I needed it and I wiped off the excess with um, a wet paintbrush and that worked just fine. So um, that was it for the for the slip part. So in general, um, this is what I would say. Um, this is a clay that you can't just take out of the bag and have fun with it. Um, if you're hand building with this clay, I, I do think that you need to pay really close attention to your moisture levels. You know, it, it really has to be soft. And um, I don't mean just wedge it. it. It has to have enough water content in it to do what you want it to do. Um, you have to keep an eye on the drying. You have to keep an eye on the wetness of it when you start. Um, if you do all of those things, I think it works just like any other porcelain, any other clay. I, like I said, I, I have had zero cracks. Um, but that's because as I was working with it, I was paying attention to it and I, you know, when I was bending the slab and I'm looking at it and I see it's almost like a microscopic crack, but I see it, it's in there. So I know that if I go to, to dry it, it's going to be huge. It's going to split the mug in half. You know, the handle is going to snap off. So um, pay attention to your clay, you know, be very careful with it. Take your time with it. This is not a clay that you can do like a quickie thing with, but it's so worth it because it's a beautiful white translucent body. I mean, it's gorgeous. So um, not a lot of mid-range porcelains can do that. So I do recommend it. Um, I would recommend it to a beginner too. I don't think it's an issue. I think that as long as you follow these tips and you pay close attention to the moisture of the clay, I think that it's completely workable. You do have to work fast, I will say. So maybe that's something that a beginner may not want to tackle right away. But, um, you know, it's for me to work fast, like I, I do sculpture, so um, maybe to work fast to just make a plain mug would be fine, you know. Um, I, I recommend it. I did not find it that difficult to work with once I followed, you know, got, got my routine going. Um, I think that um, it's slightly more difficult than your average mid-range porcelain, but um, definitely not impossible. I mean, you, you can absolutely hand build with this clay and not have any cracks. I hope you guys found this helpful. I, like I said, I am gonna tag um, Laguna Clay Company in this, as well as a couple of stores, um, just so that you guys can get on the same page about you know the clay body and um, the cones. 
but um, if you guys have any questions write them in the comments I'll get to them I'm gonna go glaze for like the next 28 hours but um, I will get to them um, you know as I work and take my breaks and um, yeah so um, I hope I'll see you guys soon I'm gonna be MIA again probably for a few days because um, really want to get firing by this weekend if at all possible and um, I'll be in touch and you'll see me around thank you so much and have a wonderful week bye